this deadfall white pine should do the trick. So one of the things I've been wanting to talk about on this channel is the idea of hand hewing as a practical skill rather than as some obsolete uh, practice that is only interesting you know, to people who are trying to recreate stuff. So I'm interested in hand hewing as uh, a useful skill specifically for people who are, you know, farming and homesteading. And so I'm interested in hand hewing timbers, just basic hewing for making, you know, structural lumber. I'm, I want to make a series about how I use hewing here on our homestead and how basic and simple it can be to hew out your own timbers for practical small building projects and even large building projects. So this video is going to be just about the real basic equipment that you need and the and I'm talking about the absolute bare bones basic equipment. So the first thing you need is an axe and one of the other things I'm going to go into is the fact that you don't need a broad axe. You can hew out timbers with any axe. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna make some really quick and dirty basic uh, V-notch log cribs so that I can get a log up on some cribbing and do some hewing. Okay, so there's your two basic V-notch cribs or saddle notch cribs. The V-notch is sort of center your log and hold it steady in combination with your log dogs. So these are log dogs. The basic log dog is just a big giant metal staple and it has two different bits. One bit is parallel. If you can see one bit is parallel with the length and one bit is perpendicular. So you put your log to be hewn on your crib and the perpendicular bit bites into that and the parallel bit bites into your crib. Okay? Very basic, very simple. These are not uh, readily available in any old average hardware store. I made these myself and you can see they're very crude and this was the first pair that I ever made and I have hewn a whole lot with these incredibly crude log dogs. In fact I've hewn a whole lot of timbers with just this log dog because I lost the other one and I was too impatient to build another one and you can see I did the taper all wrong and I worked it too much and you can see how brittle this is they've both snapped a little bit because I worked the metal too cold and made it too brittle but um, I've hewn a lot with these basic uh, log dogs which I made in a dirt hole forge you with my splitting maul as my anvil and a hair dryer as a blower so this is like not high-tech and I would say this steel is a little too thin gauge 
for a really great log dog because it you know it flexed a little bit something like this which is 5 8 is a lot better and it's nice to have a pair but you don't even need to have a pair of metal log dogs you just if you get a two by four and drill a couple of holes you know about a two foot long eight not 18 inch long two by four drill a hole in each end and run a 60 penny nail through both ends that's a good you know basic log dog that you can do a lot of hewing with so we got the log on the cribs and we're going to turn this log into a slightly more sophisticated piece of cribbing with two hewn sides so making your own cribbing hewing out your own cribbing is a great first project for hand hewing because cribbing does not have to be uh, particularly nice in any particular way so it's a great first project for getting accustomed to the procedure of hewing so first we have to pin the log down with our dogs I'm not going to go into big detail about how you need to how you need to set your log in your cribs or lay out your log for getting the maximizing your own timber because that's pretty much intuitive I think once you've got the Once you've got the log sitting on the cribs, you'll just be able to eyeball it and see the best timber you can make out of any individual log based on, you know, where the knots are and how if there's a curve to it or whatever. But I mean, I don't see the point in like talking a whole bunch about that because that's kind of like just something you can see as soon as you have a log on the cribs you can you, you can really see what you have and use your judgment so now we got to lay out our timber so you need some kind of a rule or a square I got a framing square here we can just See, we can get we can get a good eight inch timber, which is a nice size. So if we're here and about there, then you can just use your string line. mark your other vertical another video I want to make I saw this really cool timber framing and hewing old-school plum device on the Handwerks Laboratoriet or however you say that uh, channel totally awesome you can see it if you look at my playlist for hewing because it's on there so with this crib I'm gonna leave the live edge on these two sides and just hew off this thin piece on both both sides so I'm just taking a very small amount of uh, wood off both sides just slabbing off these two sides to give me this eight inch crib
the first time is to just give you Now, if you're scoring, if you got a lot, to, lot of wood to take off, you can juggle it where you take deep scorings every like one foot to 18 inches and then you bust off the waist and then you uh, come back and hew to the line. But I'm not taking off much material here, so I'm just going to do light scoring and then go straight to hewing. So what you're, gonna, what you're trying to do is just light ax cuts down to the line and just pretty much just to the line. But if you go a little bit past, that's okay. So that's scoring. So you want to keep in mind, I'm using a regular felling axe and this is a double bevel axe obviously. So I'm coming in at an angle in order to take the waist off versus with a single bevel axe, you come in straight down with the bevel out.
I don't know if there's a name for this style of hewing, but I call it tie hacker style. You know, long handled axe, close to the ground. And I do hew with broad axes too, but over time, kind of my favorite two axes and my favorite hewing style is this one, tie hacker style. For me, this is much more efficient just two cribs, you know, and a lot of the hewing that I've done since we bought the farm, I actually do out in the woods because green timbers are heavy. That's not a bad surface for the first log I've hewn in over a year, I think. It won't win any prizes or go into a Japanese temple or anything. But the other thing I've found is, you know, it's like, just like with the Cordwood Challenge, the, there's some there's some time you have to take to like train your muscle memory and everything. So we got a little bit of a complicating factor in that this chunk blew out when I was uh, scoring just now. There's an eight inch thick piece of cribbing there. And I will, all I'm gonna do now is just go through and just pop that bark off on both sides. And then I'll probably take a chainsaw and just cut off this weird end here for about the first, I don't know, 18 inches or a foot. And uh, then we'll call this piece good. And I got another log here that'll do. And then I'll have my cribs, and then we'll start talking about doing timber.
wound this tree had, try to heal over. All right, that's a nice piece of cribbing right there.